Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully you're going to learn something today. And what do we have in front of me and behind me is an assortment of cups. A large assortment of cups. Just to preface, what we're going to discuss today is not scientifically proven, just learnings from my experience in the past maybe 25 years. Also, I will preface that we do not sell all the cups you see here. Some of them we used to sell. They got this, some got discontinued. Some were given to me as gifts uh, from family and or customers. So what you see here, don't ask, where can I buy this? Because if it's not on our website, we probably don't sell it. And some cups you just can't get anywhere, uh, like some of these uh, expression cups that you see here. The purpose of this is twofold. One is when you're extracting espresso, what is the proper apparatus to extract in? Uh, number two is what is the best apparatus for or proper apparatus or a cup for extracting a better espresso, maintaining the temperature. And then third is aroma. Uh, we're going to uh, play a little bit into that. Again, nothing is scientifically proven. This is coming from experience over the years, uh, drinking espresso um, and cappuccinos. So uh, the first thing is we have steel or stainless steel. We have glass, we have ceramic, we have paper, and we have plastic. Okay. Uh, the nice part about the plastic is that you don't have to really preheat it. The espresso typically comes out very hot. However, in the plastic, I believe, and also from what I heard of other customers, is the taste uh, basically somehow gets affected with the plastic. Uh, and I have seen that while I pull a shot into an espresso uh, cup. Uh, and then also went into a, say, a ceramic cup, and there is uh, there's some impartial uh, flavoring uh, that degrades in a plastic cup, and also it fills the landfill. So take this plastic cup, in the garbage can it goes. Uh, we have paper cups, so it kind of offers the same as the plastic. The espresso can come out nice and hot, but typically, there's uh, some type of lining on these cups uh, similar to plastic. So less of an impact on the taste, uh, still good on temperature. Uh, typically, uh, in a catering environment, uh, commercial environment, uh, like a coffee shop, anything to go, will typically be in these style cups. Uh, typically, I don't see them to be recyclable, so this also fills the landfill or goes into the incinerator depending upon the locale you're in. I'm not going to throw these away because these are a little more expensive. We have ceramic porcelain cups, uh, stainless steel, um, and glass. So typically when I pull it an espresso extraction, I usually like to use a shot glass. Not always available. The most important thing is that you're preheating the shot glass, preheating any other cups that are remaining here with hot water from the machine. Either from the hot water valve on a heat exchange or dual boiler machine, uh, or through the steam wand on a single boiler dual purpose machine. And if you don't have one of those, because there are machines that make espresso only, then just pour the water through the group head and get the cup or the shot glass nice and toasty hot. That's where the espresso is not going to degrade, okay? Now, there will be persons out there saying, well, if you're using the hot water wand, that, that water is hotter than, say, what's making the espresso. True, but by the time you take the hot water and spill it out, put it to make your espresso shot, the temperature is already decreasing. So it's really important because in, in terms of taste is that a cold shot glass or a cold cup that you're going to use will tend to degrade the temperature 
bring the temperature down very quickly as soon as the espresso enters the shot glass or the cup. And that can lead a little bit to sourness or it can degrade the espresso, break up the crema a little faster. So uh, it's really important to preheat. Uh, we had these shot glasses custom made probably over 10 years ago. Uh, we can't even get them anymore. I know some of our competitors copied us, uh, but typically I have a few of these left, not for sale. Uh, these are kind of my favorite. We also have a graduated mini measure shot glass, which is kind of nice. Uh, but what I like about this is you can see the crema production that occurs uh, when you have a shot glass. When you have any other type of apparatus, you're not gonna see the pour. You're gonna see it, but you're not gonna see the Guinness effect of the shot. Uh, we had also some other different designs um, here. And then I went to a, a, I believe a Swedish furniture store uh, that's here in Jersey. And I saw these and I said, hmm, this is like a nice little shot glass. So I bought a whole bunch of them for a party in my house. Uh, they actually ended up being uh, miniature candle holders. But I said, hmm, let me try to consume espresso, pour it in here and consume it. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but maybe somebody else can try again. It's, I believe a Swedish furniture store. Um, I don't go there often, so, but they have these. You may want to try it. They're really inexpensive. I think they were under a dollar. Uh, nice thick glass. Uh, so if you look at these, they're a little thinner. Again, you have to preheat them. So you have more to preheat on the thicker glass. I don't have the small ones, but I seen coffee shops where they have these type of creamers, they're miniature ones, three ounce ones, and they're using the, these to pour their espresso into. Uh, the metal can cause heat loss. Uh, so again, it's probably a good idea to put, get some hot water from the portafilter or the group head and preheat these before making espresso. Uh, we no longer sell these. This is a gifted espresso uh, cup made in stainless. Uh, so good, but you have to preheat them. This one's actually insulated, which is really nice. So you can hold it on the outside. This one's also insulated, but there are ones, I don't know if I have any here. Nope, those are insulated as well. There are ones that are not insulated. Try to get the insulated ones so you can hold it on the outside. And now if you're gonna pull an espresso shot into Comparing from a smaller shot glass or espresso cup into say a larger cup as these are here, I don't like that. And the reason is when the espresso is pouring, you want the smallest surface area at the bottom. Uh, the wider the cup is on the bottom, the more that the oils from the crema will break up faster. So you kind of want them as narrow as possible. The problem is if you have a two spout portafilter, sometimes you're gonna have to put either two cups because one may not be wide enough on the top for a commercial grade spout. So you have to take that into consideration. All right, so the other thing that uh, I've noticed is if you're gonna be making say one or two espressos, it's, not, it's okay to have a thinner cup uh, here and you just preheat it because you're gonna serve it very fast. But in a commercial environment, or if you're entertaining at home or an office environment, you're gonna want the thicker ceramic or porcelain cups. And the reason is you're gonna preheat them and, they, and as you're making, say, eight espresso shots or 12 espresso shots, it's gonna retain the heat a little better when you're going from cup to cup and also extraction to extraction. So that's where you're gonna need the thicker ones. So I like the thick ones. And the thin ones are good, again, for one or two shots. As you can see, I'm clearing them out. Uh, I was gifted this one from uh, ECM, and this one is actually super thick and nicely designed. I give them a lot of credit. And I'm scratching my head back here because last night when I was sitting on my couch, a darn mosquito bit me. How this mosquito got in my house, I have no clue, but I've been scratching my head. It doesn't mean that I'm thinking. It means that I have a itch back here. Fellows came out with this nice little espresso uh, cup. 
Uh, there are no handles, small surface area on the bottom, uh, nice and thick. So I do like these. Uh, we do have some on our website. We talked about the stainless. And last but not least, which I believe this company went out of business, uh, Ofero made a cup that was designed uh, with a slant at the, at the top. Now this is really for righties, and I don't think they had any for lefties, if I'm not mistaken. But when you had your espresso shot and you were consuming, this extension right here preserved the aroma as you were consuming your espresso. So really nice. I wish somebody else maybe would come out with these if they're, they are out of business. Uh, so there we talk about the aroma aspect. And if you're drinking a straight espresso, okay, you have a lot of airspace here. If you're drinking a bigger cup, you may cover your nose. So these are some of the factors when choosing a cup. We don't sell a lot of cups at First Line. Our main business is espresso and cappuccino machines, espresso grinders or espresso coffee grinders and parts and service. Uh, so, but there are an assortment of cups sold all over the place online and just buy one or two, test it out see how it works and start your comparison at home. Use your favorite coffee, okay? And then make your espresso into the different cups. Again, preheating and see what tastes better, okay? Comment down below what coffee you're using. Comment also which cup was your favorite, okay? And where you purchased it for the espresso that you made and also put the ones that other cups that you may have tested. You could put links if you like. So like this, others can learn from your feedback on what cup serves the best espresso. Once again, Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Have a wonderful day and as they say, Coffee first, everything else second. Take care.